Hi, I'm Elise Wall and I'm a clinical psychologist and a sleep psychologist running the sleep psychology clinic at the Ken Miller Institute. Sleep has been a passion of mine for many, many years and one of the things that I really love doing is helping people to sleep better and to better stay asleep once they get to sleep and to have good quality sleep. So this is actually Sleep Awareness Week, and so over the next few videos, I'll be talking a little bit about various different aspects of sleep. As I sort of said before, a key aspect that I'm going to come from is this idea that falling asleep is really a process of mental, physical and emotional de-arousal. And any difficulty that we might have um, due to something going on for us personally, our personality sometimes, our environment, that impact our physical, emotional or mental arousal can in fact impact our sleep. And learning to become aware of that and how to manage that is part of the skills of sleep psychology to kind of assist people on how best to actually balance and be more in control of those areas of arousal and allow themselves to arouse. Interestingly enough, staying asleep is really maintaining the ability to not care about what you're aware of. And in fact, sometimes to disengage from any form of arousal that's going on, whether that is a physical arousal such as pain or whether that's mental or emotional arousal. So learning some skills around disengagement and being able to sleep regardless of what is going on around you, as long as you're safe, is a key aspect of sleep psychology. Before we begin working with any client, the most important thing is for the client to be able to understand and identify what their particular sleep difficulty is. Now, there's a number of different ways that general insomnia will present. Sometimes it presents with the inability to get to sleep. And so this we call an onset insomnia, where somebody wishes they felt tired, but they somehow just don't. And they can lie in bed and they'll describe sometimes lying in bed up to one hour, two hours, three hours, feeling like they're tossing and turning and not being able to get to sleep at all. And of course, for some people, that actually develops a little bit further into becoming really worried about not getting to sleep. And so sometimes what happens is they then focus on the fact that they're kind of almost dreading getting into bed and they're worrying about not getting to sleep. These are sort of areas that again in sleep psychology we work quite strongly with to actually assist and to help build skills around how to actually get to sleep easily. The second type of insomnia is what we call maintenance insomnia. Now this can be combined with somebody who has onset insomnia or it might be that you are somebody who gets to sleep really easily. Your head hit the pillow and you are out cold and you feel like you fall asleep very quickly within 15 to 30 minutes. But then maybe an hour and a half or two hours later, boing, you're wide awake and you might have frequent waking. So for some people, they might wake up naturally once at least at night, maybe to go to the bathroom or just in general. And then they find that they can kind of get back to sleep quite easily. Or you might find that people with maintenance insomnia have a lot of difficulty getting back to sleep. And they'll describe either frequent waking, or at least if they do wake once, they actually can find that they describe, they talk about lying awake for an hour, maybe two hours, and feeling like they just don't get back to sleep at all. Now, the other type of um, concern that kind of comes up for people with their sleep is they can also have early waking. So you might have somebody who gets to sleep okay, you might even not wake up frequently, but they wake up at three or four o'clock in the morning and then they really struggle to get back to sleep. And usually that sort of four o'clock sort of time where it's a bit too early to get up, um, but it's kind of past a time where they sort of almost feel like they can't get back to sleep at all. And then they sort of get frustrated with that because they want to be sleeping for another few hours. And then, of course, there's some people who describe that and say, well, there's just as they kind of just before they actually have to get up, that's when they start to feel sleepy again. And of course, the whole frustration cycle starts again. Now, there can actually also be some more complicated reasons that people have difficulty sleeping and what's very important is that part of working with somebody in the sleep psychology clinic or as a sleep psychologist or your GP is in fact to rule out that there aren't any physiological reasons 
or um, that could actually be impacting your sleep. And physiological reasons that could be impacting your sleep, for example, you could have sinus problems. You could, in fact, have sleep apnea, which may essentially means that you stop breathing a, a number of times in the night more frequently than you should be. You could actually have um, something called restless legs. You could have pain in your body. There could be a number of other reasons. Um, it could also be hormonal, so people going through things like menopause. A um, number of different reasons that actually can impact um, our quality of sleep and our ability to sleep well. So it's really important for us to rule out anything that can be dealt with on that physiological level. And then we can actually work with how we actually work on adjusting to things that might in fact be chronic. So somebody, for example, who has chronic pain can learn to sleep and can in fact learn to improve the quality of their sleep regardless of that pain. And that's some of the work that we do do, but it doesn't mean necessarily they're going to get rid of that pain. The other thing that's probably really important to think about is if you are, in fact, um, dealing with any sort of mental health concerns at the same time, depending on how those are presenting, that can also impact our sleep and is well known to kind of be uh, something that actually happens in concurrence with things like depression or even anxiety or extreme stress. If you're dealing with extreme stress within your work or other environments, school, studies, etc., cetera, um, personal life, that can also impact because ultimately it, it's all about arousal. So first step, we need to identify and have the concern raised um, and recognize that these are all areas that actually are well within the gambit of being assisted through sleep psychology. Thanks.